Hello guys, this is Oroth and welcome back to my channel. First of all, I want to thank all of you for supporting me and when I created this channel, it's uh, almost a year ago, I could never expect that I would reach thousands of subscribers and now we are also closing in on 5,000 subscribers which is uh, a huge uh, landmark for me and uh, when that happens, I promise you I'm going to release something very special for you. But in today's video, we're gonna take a look at a new wizard build that I've created. And what I really like about this build is that it's very all round. So you can use it in open world farming, you can use it in dungeons. And I've been using it with great success myself in Abyssal Verge. So let's dive straight into the build and I hope you like it and that it will be useful for you as well. First, we're gonna go through the whole setup of the build. And in the end of this video, we're going to take a look at some gameplay. I'm going to show some Abyssal Verge that will highlight and showcase uh, how well this performs in, a, in an open world setting when, when farming, when there's a lot of monsters. And we will also take a look at a couple of dungeon runs. But first, let's take a look at the skills we're using here. So first of all, I'm using Electrocute as the primary attack. But in most cases, I will not use the primary attack that much. In the first skill slot, I use Slow Time. In the second skill slot I use this Integrate, in the third skill slot I use Ice Armor and in the fourth and final skill slot I use Lightning Nova. So let's continue and look at the essences I'm using. In the helmet slot I use Autumnal Crest and what it says is that slow time now surrounds you with a static field that follows you damaging and applying shock to all nearby enemies. So it looks like this, if I use slow time there will be a huge AoE effect around me and whenever I hit an enemy with this effect, I will also apply shock. And shock makes all the enemies take 50% extra damage uh, from any type of lightning damage. And you will see in this build we are utilizing this uh, shock effect a lot. In the next slot I'm using Sprite Spark. And what it says is that Lightning Nova now transfigures you into a ball of pure lightning, allowing you to move at high speed and continually deal damage to any nearby enemies. What's important to mention here is that this essence got buffed quite recently. So instead of 30% extra movement speed as it used to give, it now gives 50%. So you can see I can move around a lot faster when I uh, activate Lightning Nova. In the shoulder slot I use the filtered defense. And what it says is that Disintegrate now surrounds you with an entropy field that follows you damaging and making nearby enemies vulnerable to critical hits. So now whenever I use Disintegrate I have this AOE effect around me and if I go here and attack the dummy you can see that there's an armor break effect and this armor break effect will increase the chance that I will critically hit that target and this will also happen if any of my allies is attacking this target so it's a debuff uh, that works very well also in a group if we look in the next slot which is the legs slot I use raptor's tail and what it says is that when this integrate hits a shocked enemy it unleashes a chain lightning dealing extra damage to the target and two nearby enemies. And this effect cannot occur more often than once every second. So this goes very well in hand with the helmet slot because this applies the shock effect with the slow time. So now when I use this integrate, the pants will be utilized every second. And also this lightning uh, effect that happens from the pants has quite long range. So if there is one uh, monster that is close to me, I will hit the target and then there will be arcs of lightning jumping over to monsters further away. Which is uh, very good because it will give us an extra reach. And this will be especially useful if we are doing a Abyssal Verge. Because we will vacuum clean almost the enemies around us with this build. If we look in the first main hand slot, I use Scour Cut, and what it says is that Disintegrate range increased by 29%. So this is basically just making this AoE effect from the Disintegrate a little bit bigger. If we look in the first off hand slot, we're using Dancing Lightning, and what it says is that Ice Armor now bestows the Grace of Thunder upon you and your nearby summons, which will periodically strike random enemies with lightning. And since we apply the shock effect with the helmet, the damage from this uh, ice armor effect will be uh, upgraded by 50% as long as the enemy is shocked. If we look in the second main hand, we use Nick of Time. And what it says is that slow time radius increased by 29%. So just as with the disintegrate main, main hand, this will uh, make the area of effect a lot bigger for the slow time. In the last and final 
often we're using frenetic spark and what it says is that lightning nova cooldown is reduced by 18.6 percent and this is good because we want to have 100 percent uptime on the lightning nova uh, so that we uh, are constantly moving at a higher speed of course you can switch this off and out if you're managing to reach the cooldown reduction cap at 30 percent through other means for example there is another version of this build that you can use if you need a little bit of more extra damage and with that version you will switch out the chest here and you will use the new isolated storm and what this does is that it will create these orbs of lightning that surrounds you and these deal quite a lot of damage but important to do if you use this version of the build instead is that we still need to ensure that we have the maximum uh, movement speed and this we can reach through collecting four pieces of ice armor eternal affix that will increase the movement speed by 32 percent and on top of that we will also have to collect some of these clandestine effects that increases our movement speed whenever we kill a monster because this effect actually stacks with other movement speed buffs so we can reach the cap of 70 percent movement speed without using the sprite spark that is in the original setup of this build if you go for this other version of this build you can switch out the second offhand for trifling piffle which says that when lightning nova hits a shocked enemy it unleashes another lightning nova and this cannot occur more often than once every 4.5 seconds that version of the build will as i said deal a little bit more damage but remember that you also have to look for some extra cooldown reduction then perhaps on some of your set pieces to make sure that you hit the 30 percent cooldown reduction cap if we look on the set pieces i'm using four pieces of banquet of ice this is because we will also apply a lot of dot effects thanks to the legendary gems I'm using with this build. On top of that I'm using two pieces of Grace and I'm also using two pieces of V2. And you could perhaps use four pieces of V2 and remove the two pieces of Grace. But at the moment I have a four piece effect from the Lightning Nova Eternal Affix. And this will give me 32% attack speed. And this does not stack with the V2 effect. So if I would use four pieces of V2, it would not have any effect at all. So this uh, two piece of Grace helps me to gain a little bit of extra damage. I still want to keep uh, two pieces of Vitus because all of these effects that I'm using are counted as buffs. So this will prolong the duration of these and make sure that I have 100% uptime. You can of course also prolong these effects through beneficial effect duration uh, on some of your magical attributes or on your reforge. Let's also take a look at the legendary gems of course and here there are many different options that are viable but I opted for a package that utilizes a lot of dot effects and in the first gem slot I use bottled hope, I use seeping bile, I use viper's bite, volatility shard, blood soaked jade, rolling consequence, igneous scorn and void spark. And what's good about this package is that there is a lot of dot effects. We have Seeping Bile, Viper Spite and Rolling Consequence. And this enables me to kill off a monster uh, if I just manage to hit it once. Also, uh, I have these explosion effects from Volatility Shard and Igneous Scorn. They would help me to kill off all of the monsters in, uh, in a very efficient way. And I also have Void Spark that helps me to spread the dots around in a big area. And of course Void Spark is also buffed from the shocked effect with the slow time helmet that we are using. So another great synergy. And I use Blood Soaked Jade just for some extra damage and the same goes for Bottled Hope. Uh, just to give me a little bit of extra damage. If you want to improve your damage a little bit, if that's necessary, you can switch out a, a few of these dot effects for some damage modifiers. You can switch in Berserker's Eye for example. You can also switch in the new one star gem because most of the damage in this build comes from skills. And there of course are other options like Pain Clasp and uh, Mother's Lament etc etc. So uh, there are many ways to uh, alter your gem composition for this build. And of course I also have to say here that you don't have to upgrade the gems uh, to a higher rank. It's enough if you get the two star gems to uh, perhaps rank six. And if you can get the five star gems to rank three. And then you can work from there. 
So this build is also friendly for anyone with uh, a little bit of lower resonance because for me it's uh, at the moment uh, a little bit of overkill when, when I play it. In terms of reforges, uh, I would recommend you to use the Vengeance family. Uh, and also with almost every type of builds you should always opt for duration of beneficial effects. But this is not a top DPS build by any means. So I wouldn't say that the reforges matter that much. So you don't have to feel stressed if you don't have the correct ones. What is important though with this build is that we're going to take a look at the Paragon. Where I'm using uh, five effects from the Brawler category. And I'm actually using the five old Warden effects. So we have Defender of Sanctuary, Combat Tricks, Heavy Armor, Rugged and Combat Expertise. And the main reason for this is that I want to be able to move through enemies. I don't want to get stuck if there's a lot of monsters around me. And also this increases my size which will in turn increase my movement speed. Uh, on this topic I also use the Protector Warband Room. Because if we go in here, we will have a very strong Warband Remnant called Shepherd's Burden, which will also increase our size by 15%. So I've said that many times in previous videos that size increases the speed and that's very important. So if you don't have this Warband Remnant in your Warband, this is something that you should work on together to find uh, wh uh, while purging the depths, because this is the most important remnant in the game. So, finally we can take a look at some gameplay. And let's begin by doing an Abyssal Verge together. And I have to say that I really feel pleased when I play this build, because it's almost like vacuum cleaning the area when I uh, float around with my Lightning Nova here. And the way I play Abyssal Verge is that I always look at the minimap all the time. And you can see that my minimap is quite huge and if you haven't uh, already made your minimap bigger I recommend everyone to go to the interface settings and there you can change the size of your map. And if you look closely now we are not uh, dealing damage only to monsters within our area of effect here. We are also dealing uh, damage to monsters outside of it and this is thanks to the pants essence that we are using and also thanks to void spark. So we are uh, almost able to kill all the monsters within the whole screen. And this is of course perfect for content like Abyssal Verge. But of course it's also useful in open world farming and in many types of dungeons. And what I really really like with this build as well is that it's so easy and simple to play. We just have to use the cooldowns whenever they are ready. And uh, then the area of effects will uh, take care of the rest. So just pay close attention to the minimap and try to always run uh, as fast as you can to the next Elite pack. I sometimes see players in Abyssal Verge that are running around and killing all of the normal monsters. And then you're wasting a lot of time because you get a lot of extra score whenever you kill Elite monsters. So try to focus on finding the Elite monsters as fast as you can. And we can also see here that it's only enough if I hit a target once then it will die thanks to either explosions or thanks to the dot effects that are applied by the legendary gems. So I really recommend you to uh, not only focus on one set of legendary gems, uh, I recommend everyone to get uh, more gems to maybe rank 5 or rank 6 if it's 2 star gems, so that you have more versatility when you're making builds. Because it's more important to use the correct gem setup compared to having higher rank gems that are not optimal for the specific content that you are playing. And I recently made a video about different uh, gem composition packages for dungeons, uh, damage, PvP and farming that you can uh, take a look at. Uh, so I'm gonna link to that video in the description. But yeah, now we've finished Abyssal Verge and you can see that it works super super well. And let's move on now and look at some dungeon runs. Here we are in Forgotten Tower and let's see how this build performs in a dungeon setting as well. It will work uh, very well in dungeons where you have to kill off a lot of monsters and that's why I wanted to showcase this build in Forgotten Tower. The damage output onto a single target is a little bit lower compared to some other builds but in many dungeons that's not what we are looking for. 
So here we have great movement speed and we also deal enough damage. And remember here in this run I also do this solo, so if we are four people the damage output will not be a problem. As I mentioned earlier, it's also so simple to play this build. So if you want to grind for many many hours, then this build is a little bit easier to play compared to some other builds where you have to smash more buttons. Personally, I also like to play those type of builds where you have to do a lot of dashes and other things to be the most efficient. But sometimes I just want to chill and hang out with uh, my party and then these type of builds works excellent as well. So you can see now when we had to kill all of, all of those mobs in the previous phase, it was super efficient with this build. Now at the boss we have a little bit less single target DPS. Usually I am able to one phase this boss when I play the top DPS builds, but uh, I would still say that it's good enough for me. So here we have finished the Forgotten Tower and I would say that this build works super well there. Let's also move on to Cavern of Echoes. Uh, here we just want to be able to kill off these monsters as fast as possible to open this ice gate. And we're also able to do so quite fast with this build. So we're not losing that much time. Of course, once again, there are some builds with more DPS output and more dash mobilities if you play the wizard. But uh, yeah, this is just very casual and very easy to play and I enjoy it. So yeah, I mean, I think that uh, we have been able to see that this build performs very well, especially in Abyssal Verge, but also here in Dungeons. And uh, yeah, I, I really hope that you enjoy the build if you want to try it out. And uh, I will be back very soon with another wizard video where I will highlight a more advanced build. And I have been able to create uh, one of the most powerful farming builds uh, that I've ever played using uh, the wizard class and also uh, combining some of the new uh, abyssal verge affixes that I was talking about in a previous video. And I can't wait to share that with you guys. But until that time, I would like to wish you a very nice day or a very nice evening, wherever you are. And of course, to all of my clan members in Nyx, I would also like to say Voruk Nyx and Sholak Sol. So, bye bye! more time.